With the discovery of radioactivity, subatomic particles, and quantum physics, the modern era had arrived. The population was growing quickly thanks to the massive reserves of bird guano on the islands along the Peruvian and Chilean coastlines, which was the best source of fertilizer at the time. The world demand for fertilizer was growing quickly, and the supplies were running out. The islands became so valuable that entire wars were fought over them. But in 1908, Fritz Haber created the way to make fertilizer from thin air. Literally, he used the nitrogen in the atmosphere with pure hydrogen gas to make ammonia, and ammonia is one of the best fertilizers there is. It won Haber a Nobel Prize, and it soon became known as the famous Haber process. If we were to search for the greatest contribution that chemistry has ever given mankind, the Haber process would top the list by far. Over 33 tons of nitrogen were taken from the atmosphere each day, converted into fertilizer, and spread over farms, more than quadrupling agricultural land productivity and allowing the human population to blossom. Thanks to the Haber process, the amount of wheat we can grow on a single acre of land went from about 250 kilograms to over 1,000 kilograms today, and the factor between those two numbers is 4. The human population went from about 1.6 billion people in 1900 to over 7 billion people today, and the factor between those two numbers is about 4.4. So the human population increased by a factor of about 4, and the amount of food we could grow increased by a factor of about 4. That's not a coincidence. The human population would not have grown by a factor of four if there wasn't enough food for everyone. The human population increased by a factor of four because the amount of food we could grow increased by a factor of about four. And that's pretty much the only way the human population ever can grow. Ammonia is made of nitrogen, and a study conducted by Science Direct calculated that 80% of the nitrogen atoms found in the human body are there only because of the Haber process. And that makes sense because there were only 1.6 billion people in 1900, and there are over 7 billion people today. That's a difference of 5.4 billion people, and 5.4 billion is about 80% of 7 billion. 80% of the nitrogen atoms found in the human body are supplied from the Haber process because the Haber process produced 80% of the current population, and the nitrogen is divided by each one of us. There's a high probability that the reason why you exist today is because of the Haber process. If the Haber process didn't exist, you, your parents, your grandparents, and many other billions of people, including Martin Luther King Jr., Steve Jobs, and Carl Sagan, may never have been born at all. Ammonia is valuable as a fertilizer, but it can also be used as an explosive. When World War I broke out in 1914, Britain seized control over all the natural nitrogen sources in South America, and Fritz Haber was a 45-year-old Jewish man who lived in Germany. His invention gave Germany a huge advantage in the World War, and although his wife begged him not to, he took a job offer with the German military to work on other chemical weapons of mass destruction. Without the Haber process, Germany would have ran out of explosives in just a few months, and the war might have ended on the very day that they would have ran out. Even though they had Haber on their side, Germany still lost the war, and Haber was charged with being an international war criminal. His wife then shot herself with a pistol, he was exiled from Germany for being Jewish, and he was later killed seeking refuge on his way to England. It's strange how a single invention can both help and harm so many people, that it can both win you a Nobel Prize and get you convicted of an international war crime. But what's more strange is that hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia were all discovered before the year 1800. In fact, the use of ammonia was even known by the ancient civilizations. The ancient Egyptians called it the salt of Amun, after the Egyptian king of the gods, and the Roman translation of it was sal ammoniacus. Over a hundred years passed between the time that the technology of the Haber process could have been invented and the time that it actually was invented. The invention of the Haber process seems obvious to us now, but one of the most obvious inventions in history was that of the cotton engine, or cotton gin for short. It was invented in 1793 by Eli Whitney, a Yale graduate working as a private tutor in South Carolina. Other cotton gins had been invented in the past, but they were so hard to use that it was almost just as easy to pick the seeds out of the cotton by hand. The cotton gin that Whitney invented revolutionized the cotton industry. 
but it contained no electrical or gas-powered parts whatsoever. It could have been invented, literally thousands of years, before it actually was invented. Before that time, people picked seeds out of the cotton, seed by seed by seed. It makes you wonder, if the cotton gin took so long to be invented, what kind of things do you think we could possibly invent today, but we haven't yet? What kind of things would you like to invent? Think about it.